and ancient grain gets a second look. Demand for sorghum is on the rise internationally, yet many farmers, well, you could say they don't have the itch to grow a grain that's used for food, feed, and fuel. Here's more. But if I'll get here tomorrow morning. Between the breakdowns and the rain. Today, probably. Lynn Baylitz is a little behind this spring. Well, I'm still planting. <laughs> the last seed to go in the ground, sorghum, also known as Milo. For me, it works out really good with the cattle operation because I can use the Milo for feed. I can use the good Milo stalks. They make a lot better feed than the corn stalks do. And if it snows, the cows can go out and find something to eat in the Milo stalks where they have a hard time in the corn stalks, you know, because it's usually, if it get a lot of snow, it's buried under the snow. More than animal feed, gluten-free sorghum is being used in more and more items at the grocery store and used to make fuel. I can haul it right to the ethanol plant in Central City. They'll take it, mix it in with the corn. Interest in sorghum may be on the rise. Harvest numbers from last fall show promising things for this industry in Nebraska. People are kind of giving it another look now. They realize that it performs better under drier conditions. It doesn't get stressed under the heat like corn can. American farmers exported a record $2 billion of sorghum last year, most to China. To understand why it's not more popular with growers, you have to talk about the itch. Yeah, that's always what people say, oh, I, I itch already. And <laughs> Lynn says that's improved over time, but he's still far outnumbered by corn and soybeans. Well, I'm kind of a minority. I was there for a while, years ago, I was the only one, and then there have been like half a dozen or so other guys that have come back and are growing milo again now. The call for more ethanol at the gas pump has been heard. Now farmers wait on the EPA. Here's the issue. The EPA has set ethanol targets below the level required by Congress. In a hearing this week, advocates, including Governor Pete Ricketts, testified the EPA needs to live up to the higher level. Oil companies, though, said the decision should be up to the market and not the government. The agency is expected to make a final ruling by the end of the year. Another EPA change also draws criticism from corn growers. The Nebraska Corn Growers Association says the EPA's plan to reduce the acceptable levels of atrazine is putting one of the most effective weed control strategies in jeopardy. The EPA is trying to cut the level of concern by more than half to 3.4 parts per billion on a 60-day average. According to the corn growers, thousands of scientific studies have found that herbicide is safe. Going organic. It's not a battle with GMOs. As our Grow co-host Marilyn Barnett explains, some farmers are embracing both. Trying out organic crops. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean that these farmers are against GMOs or traded crops. In fact, it's not about that argument at all. What's going on is these farmers are just trying to take advantage of the demand and the market that's out there and generate more income. Scrubbing out a planter. We're scrubbing the row units. Forgoing the auger. And dumping seed from the original box. This is a different process than I'm used to. Documenting every step along the way. So they know from start to finish what the steps have been. Keeping chemicals and GMOs at bay. Jeff decided to dedicate one field to organic soybeans this year. I've been farming GMO crops for years. I slept on it and I thought I'd try one field. His decision is all about diversifying. You know, we're looking to, to try something different and see if we can you know, capture the extra profit for the farmer. When you have corn selling at barely break even prices, farmers are looking for other options. The market's down, you always look for something else to, for income and you're always looking to cut costs too. I guess I see it as a way for my customers to uh, earn a little extra money in, in a down market. For organic, demand is high and buyers come a knocking. Door will be open. <laughs> There's such demand out there that, that there are people out there that will actually come to the farmer to pick the product up. Some even willing to pay cash rent and then buy the crop. Farmers put in the work, and it's a lot of work. I to keep something separate now and clean stuff out as I go. This was actually planted to oats. The reason? To control the weeds. We can either do it with cover crops like what we're doing here, or there are organically approved chemicals. What you see back there? That tractor is actually laying down little pellets while it's strip tilling. Those pellets are actually cattle manure. 
That is the fertilizer instead of chemicals. The guys that actually make this, they've done some strips up to 1,000 pounds an acre and have seen some pretty phenomenal results with it. So instead of, for instance, selling corn at about $340, $380 a bushel, you're looking more around $9 on the low end for organic. Some great demand for this type of product. And as far as input costs go. I'm actually surprised because when we sat down and started going through the different programs, um, when you start looking at inputs, they're actually about the same as what uh, commercial inputs would be. It takes three years to be certified. In the meantime, there's still a market for those transition crops. For one instance I know of, the farmers are able, able to actually get a dollar a bushel more in transition. Along with trying something new, there is some apprehension. It scares me to try new things once in a while. But uh, it, it's a chance I wanted to take because the more options we went over, it looked more interesting and more profitable down the road. But with teamwork, we'll play play in the dirt on top. Jeff and Ty are excited to see what this crop will bring. So Mother Nature works with us and we can get this first crop off and, and learn from it and go from there. We're going to hopefully follow Jeff during this whole process, even up to harvest time, and give you some of the results of what comes out of that field. No air conditioning, no GPS. Antique tractors hit the highways and byways. NTV's Sarah Kirkley has more. When we caught up with them in Grand Island, they'd already driven about 140 miles. They're stopping at parks along the way to commemorate the centennial of the National Park Service, and they're also collecting checks. Top speed, 12 miles per hour. You see a lot of countryside that way. These antique tractors are making it across Nebraska one mile at a time. It'll be over 450 when we get done. Russ Barth is driving the oldest tractor in the fleet. And it's hand start, so that's, it doesn't have a battery. But he says it's his favorite to take on rides like this. It's just fun. Gives a chance to use the old tractors a little bit. They hope all those miles add up to thousands of dollars raised for a charity that they've been supporting for three years now. Operation Comfort Warriors, which is an American Legion run program that started in 2009. And because 100% of proceeds go to help wounded soldiers and their families, Wilton says there's no money left to advertise. These riders are happy to spread the word. So we have veterans in our group who are driving you know, and that's one reason why we decided to support them. But they also want those they meet to get a glimpse of what farming once was. A lot of these vehicles, uh, including the tractors, are being melted down for scrap metal. And we love our old tractors, and many of us grew up on the farm. We farmed with them. I did, my dad did, and he put me on a tractor when I was eight, and I have one of those tractors. So, you know, that's why we do it. They call each other their tractor family. But you know, sometimes we're almost more bonded than we are with members of our own family. It's a special group of people. Still to come, get a taste of what's called the other red meat. But up next, get a bird's eye view of problems in the field.